Charlie T. F. Gross. You know, it sounds like a boys' school in a really bad place. <laughs> and so, David Winston insisted that in the ancient days people made flour out of these. And so a bunch of his long-term students got together and said, all right, we're going to grind a bunch of these things up, and then we're going to make some baked goods. Oh, they were just like rocks. Oh, it was so bad. I forgot, the, I forgot the name of it already. And this is yellow dock. It's also called curly dock, and the species name is Rumex crispus, which does not refer to a texture, but refers to the crisp edges. Same way you crisp a pie. That special little tool called a crisper. Weirdness is everywhere. I like a case of crispers. <laughs> Why not? You just line all these up here and roll it up. Well, they didn't tell David that it was awful. Instead, they made a whole bunch of cookies and brought them to one of the big Green Nations gatherings and handed them out at his booth selling his books and courses and stuff. Everybody was smiling. Oh, yellow dock seed cookie. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and so somebody asked David, what's the secret in one of his classes where he was just carrying on, just as somber as ever. And he said, I don't know, the students made it. They must have some old recipe. And one of the students said, yep, we use two pounds of powdered chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it all depends on how you dress it. Anybody else still got nettle scratch back? A little bit. Oh, good. This is keeping me awake. So this is an eternal plant, and it is a plant that contains something, I know not what, that mm, increases the absorption of iron from your food stream. I probably know that to find out if somebody is anemic, they don't ask them. Everybody lies about anemia. <laughs> but not just done. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> they take a sample of your blood, about as big as two thumbs worth, this huge syringe. What, what are you doing that for? And then they put it in a bunch of tubes in a special centrifuge. And each centrifuge tube has a gauge from zero to 30, at least in all the ones that I looked at. And then the centrifuge will basically spin stuff down by throwing those, sorry, tubes out like that and everything that's heavy settles. And then they measure how deep, this is so precise, it's enough to give a person the quivers, so how deep or how high on the gauge is the pile of red blood cells and platelets. And if it's under 20, you're seriously approaching anemia. Under 15, you're anemic. Under 10, you need a transfusion. And this is especially in the cases of women in their second trimester, months five to seven in particular, where they're being consumed by the developing fetus. Weird little trade off. Parasite. <laughs> it seems. And so then the woman is prescribed iron pills, which are ferric, or, yeah, ferric gluconate which is a known constipator. Yeah. If you got diarrhea, there's terrible. nothing like iron tablets that just <laughs> seize you right up. It's like iron pyrite. And so my herb manager <coughs> was saying, ah, oh, such a dumb thing to do. She was also a midwife. Well, all you need to do is to give them powdered yellow dog root. The reason it's yellow and leaf. Lee, you got one? You got that shovel? Lee, Lee. Lee. The oh, shovel. Yeah, coming right up. All right. Good. We've got a victim. I mean, a, a sample here. <laughs> so the roof. So is so, that the same as this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, this yeah, is a recent upstart, as oh, yeah. they say. Okay. <laughs> and it grows from a long-lived massigo. Oh, would you do the honors, please? Sure. All okay. right. So we want this to all off, which is in heavy clay. So we're sure it's like about out here. Yeah. And dig in that direction. All right, watch out. Here we go. It's deep or nice yeah, deep as you can. Doing okay. the serious yeah. stuff really in the roof in particular. Yes. Yes. 
I, ha I have it growing as a volunteer in my garden, as a welcome volunteer. I eat it in my salads every day of the year because it's frost resistant because of the relatively high load of oxalates in the leaves. And so there's a hazard for those who are stone formers that you might be getting excess of oxalates. So she said, I just, just give them that, that powdered yellow dock root. Yeah. And it's 40% iron. Yeah. I looked around, and I thought, hmm. All these sweet new age believers, 40% iron. It would clank when you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to question her. She will embarrass me to tears about something else if I mention it. So I went and I got a magnet and a big root. I figured at 40% iron, that thing is going to yolk. Is there more in there that I should dig for? <laughs> wow, I don't think so. A little stubborn there. All right, so let's see. Oh. Come on. Here, we'll chop it. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, because I did not want it to cut, hidden in amongst all wow, that wonderful that. mud and muck is a great, yeah. thanks, Lee, oh, sure. super thanks. yellow dock root. And so it wasn't magnetic, and I mentioned to her in private, I'm sorry, am I flashing root dropping? <laughs> no, you're fine. First. Uh, who, who did the work, you think, on finding out that it was 40% iron? That's a lot for a biological tissue. <laughs> My gosh, even the <clears throat> magnetometers in the brains of birds, so it's only about 4 or 5%. She says, well, let me hear. Maybe no, that was a complex. It's only 4%. Right, sort uh -huh. of like orthofinanthrolene or something, which goes around and picks up iron selectively. Great stuff, orthofinanthrolene. I used to love that working as an analytical chemist for shell oil. Yep, and their pipes are all deteriorating. So it really is yellow. Can you see that? All oh, the things you do for class. <laughs> yeah. You're always so dirty, right? It's almost because I'm a teacher. <laughs> Better dirty oh, yeah, pants than a that. dirty mouth, isn't it right? Yeah. All right, so. Oh, thank you. My former students. Sure. So you eat the root in your salads every day? Mm -hmm. Let me continue. But you are getting to the punchline. All right. So she said, well, no. Oh, it's, she found out that it was actually 4%, up to 4% iron-containing compounds. Mm. And so it's actually much less than 1%. And that's available iron, which is pretty nice. But the real deal <coughs> is that it enhances the uptake of iron that's already in the diet knowing that less than 1% on average. Now, who's measuring this? That's getting a lot of weird poop together. <laughs> People absorb less than 1% of their dietary iodine, or iron, excuse me. And that's important, because you eat all this iron <laughs> stuff, and you scoop full of iron. It's just feeding your E. coli, which, of course, is making your stool. Well, I'll pass this around so everybody who has not can already have some. Well, I just tucked that in the back of my mind, and I was selling a lot of yellow dock root, digging it out of soil that hadn't been exposed for 12,000 years. Someone had dug down to the primordial clay to make a big pond, and there was nothing growing there. In the first three to four years, it came up in yellow dock. I don't know where the seeds came from. Enormous. The largest root was seven pounds. Wow. That's enormous. Wow. wow. There was no competition. No, no not That's for the okay, roots, yeah. but for yeah. the, the plant itself. And then, of course, Sarah was pregnant and was looking kind of pale. I thought, oh, we're just going to do a home delivery and all that sort of usual stuff. Wish we did, eventually. Maybe we'll just take you over to Orcas and Stan will run a hematocrit on you. Okay. And she was down there about two or three. Oh, jeez. He said, you better take these iron, iron pills right away. Yeah, 15 is the cutoff line for worry. And she said, well, I'm not going to. I know they'll just make me constipated. And I'm having enough trouble with just the baby, and I want to have a pound of poop as well. <laughs> so I said, okay, we'll go to the yellow doctor. And so <clears throat> I shredded it up fresh so I'd be better and taste it. The leaves taste pretty good, and there's a whole bunch more of them. Ooh. Did you get a piece of the room? No, no, what no. happened? It's right there. It's right there. Sorry, I'm... Hogging it. 
It's true. Oink, oink. Pass it around. Thank you. So, and, and this is a, not a very powerful specimen. I know that because it's not red or orange in the middle. The older they get, the more and more they accumulate. Anthocyanins, which contain no iron whatsoever. And so it was a false doctrine of signatures that, well, they tasted like iron. And if you've ever tried to recycle nails, or when you were a kid, go around to construction sites and pick up all the nails, and they say, don't take them out of the keg, you can have or all the bent nails, or building stuff, and you have a mouthful of nails. Non-galvanized, galvanized you taste the zinc. But otherwise, it's rusty nails. This, yeah. to me, tastes exactly yeah. like, like rusty, rusty nails. Yeah. But not, not, there's no hydrastine or berberine in here. So the red is not... Oh, I'm sorry. So anywho, it, it's false advertising for iron. But in terms of iron uptake, it's great. And after eating someone, she said, I'd rather be anemic than eat that stuff. <laughs> well, how about if we cook it in tea with a lot of honey? Oh. Sugar-coated nails. <laughs> we were building a house at the time, so we had a lot of rusty nails in the Northwest. Uh, well, this is where deviousness comes forward. R well, she asked the running down a side corridor question, and that is, where did people get their iron from after the advent of cooking? It was from cast iron cookware. And when Teflon coated and aluminum pots and pans came in, Iron deficiency went way up. Mm -hmm. So, well, more and on about that. And so I, well, I'll do something really nifty. I will put it in the curry powder and just slowly start eating curry at least once a week. The color is exactly the same. And turmeric and cumin and all that other stuff, Mom. you can't taste any nails in there. In fact, three or four feet down the shelf, everything kind of smells a little bit like curry. And it works. And we got our hematocrit up to 30. It was wonderful. Wow. Stan said, how did you do it? Oh, we just changed your diet. I didn't tell him until years later about some other deal. Oh, guess what? We were basically disguising it. And I've recommended that ever since. When there is someone who looks a little pale on a bright, sunny summer and hmm, low iron and just assume that they've got a low hematocrit. Whether or not you can take this to excess, usually your diarrhea will tell you that you probably had a little bit too much. And the plant has been studied one at a time in botanical gardens in what was western Germany, particularly where I did my postdoc, University of Bonn, in the old botanical garden there, and there were yellow dock plants that had been passed down from professor to graduate student for several generations. A single plant had outlived the people that were studying a single plant. Yeah. That monomaniacal approach to science. And then there were experiments done where they would take a big root, and as I mentioned before, they do it massive, and find out that it could grow and produce flowers and seed if it was pollinated without any further water or food. And so that big root is basically not only survival, but a reproductive mechanism to tide you over. But my neighbors were so glad to see me coming with a shovel when they had yellow duck. It's Ryan. He's going to dig up all our yellow duck because it spreads really efficiently through all these seeds. And every tiny little piece is a potential meristematic reproductive <coughs> vegetative organ. And so if you plow them up really finely, thousands of new little plants. They don't even need seeds. Look come. It's got things figured out. And yeah, great plant, yellow duck. And I. I don't know specifically what eating the greens every day will, are doing, except padding out the salad and putting a little bit of bitterness in there. I don't see any good apical meristem here. Any other plants have any young green just coming up yet, sort of the end of the growth season or new growth season? I don't know, well, maybe I'll find it some over here. So what we're looking for is a growing tip. Here I The growing tip is extremely antimicrobial. Nope. See, see, that's already a virgin inflorescence. Okay. <coughs> it's long, but not quite. Okay. Well, let me see. I'm, I'm looking down here. 
Yeah. Here's the closest, and I think I've got one. And if you want aloe vera, you've got mm. aloe vera equivalent. Yeah. Look at that. You wow. see that? Wow. What a mucilage. And it can't be put wow. in a jar or safe. But if you're out and about and yellow duck young tips are growing, this is mechanical and antimicrobial protection in that it is antibacterial, antifungal, and it lubricates the new leaves so that they slip out of the encasing sheathing without tearing themselves. What a great device. It keeps microbes from getting in. Yeah, yeah, the tips of all the docks that are true docks in the polygonacy. So it's curly dock, yellow dock, see, ox, Rumex occidentalis or water dock. Nice thing to know, and usually available in our climate almost year round. Because here it is, six months after the busy growth season, and somebody must have mowed it down. Maybe a deer, perhaps. You know. And darn, did I take the only one? Oh, typical greedy academic. Well, maybe she had it back there. I don't think it was actually. Well, when you see one, give it a little tickle. Remember, the brutes live indefinitely. And it'll just figure you're just an aggressive friend. <laughs> Who knows? Speaking of which, nutrients, food, lunch.